All right, so what we got here is an object's launched with a velocity of an X velocity of 125 meters per second, right? And it looks like you have defined to the right as positive X. And are you making down positive? Yeah, down positive. Okay. So you can always make down positive if you wish. Okay? And then let's write down your givens. Do you have our x velocity? Okay, so v not x, which is the same as v in the x direction, looks like it's 125 meters a second, right? So this is the same because you don't have any opposing force? <laughs> There's no net force in the horizontal direction, right? This is a number 6, right? Yeah. On your worksheet. Easy worksheet. It's gonna get worse. So why don't you guys tell me what V not Y is? Don't guess. It's got to be zero. Look, when the ball becomes, yeah, as soon as the ball becomes a projectile, its velocity is gonna change in both magnitude and direction, right? And then it's gonna hit the ground. But at the instant the ball leaves the table. It's only moving horizontally at that brief instant. And the velocity is immediately going to change from horizontal to downward, and the velocity vector is going to change length and growth. Right? It's still going to be constant. What? But it's still going to be constant. The x velocity only is constant. The y velocity is growing. The velocity as a whole is changing direction, and the velocity as a whole, I mean, the x and y velocity. Those velocities added together are your velocity. That's changing. Your y velocity is changing, but your x velocity isn't. And you guys saw that in the lab, right? So why'd you, why'd you put zero? Because initially, your y velocity is zero. It's gonna grow. What's a in the x direction? What's a in the y direction? He made down positive. So that's a positive in this case. Sure. Um, I don't know. What else do you know? This makes me not wide. Okay. So you know how high this thing is? 17.5. Okay. So this is 17.5 meters. This distance. And <clears throat> that means your delta y from beginning to end. I like working with delta y. It's just, for me, it's easier. It is uh, positive. 17.5 meters because again down is positive so your final position minus your earlier position like if we make it, it well, no matter where zero is your displacement's going to end up being a positive number right yeah okay so um yeah fi th this is final minus initial position is our displacement okay so now we're looking at um, I could I could do a lot of things. I could sketch some graphs. That's that's actually one of my favorites. He made. Um, I mean, it's nice to sketch the graphs because the equations all come from graphs. You don't have a lot of time, huh? So I'll do graphs for the y direction real quick. And I would I wouldn't start with um, the hardest one. I would start with the easiest one, which is probably acceleration. If down's positive, acceleration's positive. Right? Now, if down is positive, your VY is always positive because it's always moving downward and it's just speeding up like that. And then the Y, if I make this zero, zero position, Y not equals zero. So I'm going to add that to my list. Then I start here and I speed up. And this is like a nice curve. So it's really simple. Um, all right. The equation we want to use here, what are we trying to find? The time? Which one do you want to use? All right. So that's, I'm going to convert to y. y final equals y naught plus v naught y t plus one half a y t squared. Yeah, what's up? Why is what going up? Well, he defined positive is down. And I made zero position at the top of the cliff. I'm allowed to do that. So, so I start at zero position. 
and I'm going in the positive direction so my slopes are positive. I'm speeding up so my slopes get steeper. It all depends what direction you define as positive. So it doesn't matter if it goes like that. But you, but you got to be clear on what direction is positive. Every problem. That's why I say to draw a diagram and label your directions clearly, like like we do here. Okay, so let's get to this. Um, oh, another thing I would do, since I wrote in terms of displacement, I like subtracting y naught from both sides. And then I have delta y final equals v naught y t plus one half a y t squared, right? Yeah? I like doing it that way because now I can look at my velocity graph and I know that this is the area of my velocity graph. And I can check things. Make sense? And I can say, well, v naught y is zero. So this becomes delta y final equals one half a y t squared. The problem is basically done. Solve for t. What do you get? Two goes to the other side. Two delta y final over a y square root. Done. You guys good? Okay. So you guys can do that part on your own. What What's the next thing we're looking for here? Um, how far from the ship does it land? They're talking horizontally, aren't they? Yes. So, this was my vertical direction. Separate that from horizontal. What's the velocity graph going to look like horizontally? Let's just draw one of those. So it's like this. And the acceleration graph, this is x direction, not y. What's the acceleration graph look like? Yeah. This is t. And then the velocity graph looks like this. And you guys could probably tell me what this area represents. It's our displacement, which is V, X, T. And we probably have T. We probably have V, X. We could find our displacement. And they're looking for how far from the, the ship does it land, so it's perfect. What's V, X? Well, I'll, let, I'll leave that for you guys to do. V, X is 125 meters per second and our team is whatever this part yeah so again I'll leave that for you guys thank you Mr. Dave cool and I'll put this up